Hi, guys. Today, we're going to be reading and listening to a story uh, about live bearing milk producers. This is CKLA Domain 2 Animal Classifications, Lesson 12. You're going to see some vocabulary words. These vocabulary words are words that you're going to hear in today's story. You're not expected to know them just yet, but with repeated exposure throughout all the lessons, hopefully you'll get a good understanding of the, most of these words. You can also keep a unit dictionary, like a notebook, where you write down the words, the definitions, maybe use them in sentences, or use some kind of other writing exercises to help you remember them better. So those are just some possibilities. The first word up here is diaphragm. Diaphragm is a layer of muscles that separates the upper and lower body sections of mammals and creates a space for the lungs to expand when they breathe in oxygen. So put your fingers kind of right under the end of your rib cages. When you take a deep breath in, your lungs expand. When you exhale, you can kind of feel how the muscles relax. Right underneath the edge of the ribs there, that's probably right about where your diaphragm is going to be. Mammary glands. Mammary glands are milk producing organs found in female mammals. Next we have marine. Marine means related to the sea. And then last we have stately. Stately means grand or impressive in size and manner. Some of these words are actually multiple meaning core vocabulary words. Diaphragm and marine, they have multiple meanings. There's one phrase that we may hear today that you may have heard before in your life somewhere. You may have heard the term, the, the show must go on. We'll talk about that if we see it when we get there. So let's play a little game to get started. Remember, my class students, you're not going to answer out loud right now. We're going to guess the mammal. Okay? This read aloud and the reading today are both about mammals. To start the lesson, we're going to see how much we already know about mammals. During Guess the Mammal, I'm going to list three characteristics of a mammal, and you're going to try to guess the animal for the mammal. Remember my class, don't say anything out loud. Online, you will get a question possibly from your teacher, so listen carefully. You can find me resting in rivers, lakes, and swamps to keep cool. I eat mostly grass. I am one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. What am I? If you said hippo, you'd be correct. A hippo is one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. Okay. Clue number two. Listen carefully. I am the largest animal to live on earth. My tongue can weigh as much as an elephant. I have to come to the surface of the water to breathe. What am I? If you said whale, well, you got it. How about this one? Clue number three for mammal number, well, clues for mammal number three. I have soft gray brown fur with white fur on my belly. You can find me in the woodlands and grasslands. I glide through the air with the help of my tail. What am I? If you said flying squirrel, you'd be correct. Now, throughout this lesson, you're going to learn more about mammals and how to analyze how the author presents the information. Now, we're going to be looking today specifically about some different thing, text features, one of which is going to be comparison. We're going to be comparing things in our text today. So listen carefully to that. What do we know already about mammals? Think about this for a moment. Maybe you remember from first and second grade some information about mammals. 
So the during today's read aloud, listen carefully for more information about this group of hairy, milk-making creatures called mammals. Well, boys and girls, it's me, Rattenboro, back again. Today, we're going to talk about a group of animals that you already know a little something about. Based on your own personal experience, Hilda Hippo is one of these, and I am one of these. Remember our mnemonic device? All my best friends represent vertebrates? Why, well, yes, the letter M in the word my stands for mammals. And guess what? You are mammals too. Who can name some characteristics of mammals? In what ways were you like Hilda and me? What keen observations you make. Yes, we are warm-blooded vertebrates with hair. If you could help me teach this lesson. Let's begin with the name of this group, mammals. It comes from the Latin word mammalia. The word mammalia refers to a group of animals who possess mammary glands. Mammary glands are milk-producing organs belonging to female mammals. When female mammals give birth, they secrete a nourishing substance, milk, to feed their young. That is one of the primary characteristics of mammals. We feed our young milk. That's right. Rats drink mother's milk. Hippopotami drink mother's milk and so do humans. The mother's milk has all the nourishment that a baby needs. Mammals have backbones. Reach around and check out your back once more to make sure your backbone is still there. Of course it is. Without backbones, we wouldn't be able to sit up straight or hold our heads in the air. In our spinal cords that house the nerves that send messages to our brains would be unprotected. So, because we all have backbones, scientists call us, what? Ah, uh, yes, quite right. We are all vertebrates. Reptiles, amphibians, and fish all have a relatively low metabolism. And, as you have learned, are classified as cold-blooded animals. Like birds, mammals, such as horses, have a high metabolism, burning lots of energy to help them maintain a constant internal body temperature. What is the term that taxonomists use to classify mammals in terms of body temperature? <laughs> yes, we are all warm-blooded. Take a look at this sentence. Like birds, mammals such as this horse have a high metabolism. I've circled the word like because like is actually helping make a comparison in the story. Like is comparing birds to mammals, saying that they are similar. In this sentence, it tells me that these two animals, birds and mammals, these two animal groups, both have a high metabolism. Like is a clue word. When you hear words like like, you're being clued in to a comparison. Keep that in mind as we go through. Other words that help us make comparisons are going to be same and both. If we hear those words, we're making a comparison. If we're making a contrast or showing a difference, we're going to see however, on the other hand, or unlike. Keep that in mind as we go through today's lesson. One of you was right when you said that mammals are covered in hair or fur. Some of us are hairier than others. Hilda Hippo and other hippopotamuses don't look so hairy, do they? But you might remember that they do have a little bit of hair around their mouths. 
and on the top tips of their ears and tails. You can see that here with the magnifying glass. Let's take a look at a few of our furrier friends. Here's one of my favorite mammals. I love his stately long neck and envy his ability to reach high into trees to eat leaves and to see into the distance. I'll bet that if I were as tall as a giraffe, I could spot my enemies more quickly. Does anyone know what the other animal is? It's a yak. Yaks need their shaggy hair and dense woolly undercoats to help keep them warm on the cold Tibetan plateau where they live. Tigers and leopards have fur. Look at this Bengal tiger and this beautiful snow leopard of Central Asia. Both of these cat species are on the list of endangered species, a list of animals whose numbers have dwindled due to the loss of habitats and overhunting. Let's take a look at this sentence. Both of these cat species are on the list of endangered species. You see a clue word? Endangered. The clue word is both. Both is telling me right here that we are making a comparison between the cats. Both of these cats are on the endangered species list. They're comparing two different ones. Does anyone know what this is? It's a marmot, a type of squirrel. And here's another type of squirrel, a flying squirrel. These squirrels don't really fly, but they have two folds of skin on the sides of their bodies that let them take great leaps, gliding through the air with the help of their tails for steering. The only mammals that can truly fly are bats. They have skin between their long fingers that stretches out, turning their arms into wings when they open. Bats may seem like birds, however, they are not because they have no feathers. They actually have a fine fur and they give birth to live young. Take a look at this sentence. Bats may seem like birds, however, they are not because they have no feathers. The author is using the text feature comparison right here with the word however. Notice however here is telling us and explaining that they are making a contrast between bats and birds. They're telling how they're different because it states in the sentence because they do, don't have any feathers. Most, but not all mammals are terrestrial. Terrestrial meaning that they live on land. Can anyone think of an aquatic mammal? A mammal that lives in water? I'll give you a hint. One of them is my friend, Hilda. Ah, uh, yes. Hippopotami love the water but they are actually semi-aquatic, meaning that they live partly in water and partly on land. Usually, Hilda and other hippopotami stand in the water during the day to keep cool. Then, they graze on land when evening falls. Whales are marine mammals, meaning that they live in the ocean. The blue whale is not only the largest mammal, but it also it is also the largest animal on Earth. Blue whales can grow up to 100 feet long. That's a little longer than a basketball court. Its tongue alone weighs more than three tons. Imagine that! 
Manatees and smaller whales, such as dolphins and porpoises, are also fully aquatic marine mammals. They share saltwater seas with walruses and seals, semi-aquatic animals that like to wander on shore just like Hilda Hippo does. Marine mammals are believed by many scientists to have evolved from land mammals, and they share many of the same characteristics. They are warm-blooded. They have backbones and fur or hair, even though sometimes it is the tiniest amount of hair. And they breathe oxygen from the air. Remember when we talked about how fish use gills to breathe oxygen from the water? Remember how, it, how in amphibians those gills develop into lungs? requiring amphibians to come to the surface of the water to breathe air? Well, mammals also have lungs. All mammals have lungs and an underlying diaphragm that assist breathing. When the diaphragm tightens, it creates more space in the lung cavity, and air is drawn into the lungs. All mammals, including whales and porpoises, dolphins and manatees, must come to the surface of the water now and then to breathe. Some mammals also live in fresh water. I want to introduce you to another semi-aquatic relative of mine. This is a capybara. He, like me, is classified as a rodent and likes to swim. Let's look at this sentence. He, like me, is classified as a rodent and likes to swim. Notice on here that there's a clue word. The clue word is like. I did not circle this one. Like is telling us we're making a comparison. Who are we comparing? He to me. Okay. The author uses that to make us a comparison. Let me go back. The dugbill platypus is unusual. It is one of only a few mammals that lay eggs. Spiny anteaters, also natives of Australia and nearby islands, are the only other egg-laying mammals. All other mammals are live-bearing which means they give birth to live young. The young are nourished outside, inside the mother's body, and most are fully developed when they are born, looking like smaller versions of their parents. A few, like kangaroos and opossums, are part of a group of mammals called marsupials. Marsupial babies are very underdeveloped when they are born, but they move directly to the mother's protective pouch, to be nourished by her milk. All mammals, whether hatched from eggs or born live, feed on the mother's milk in their infancy. Remember, learning that birds' beaks may provide clues to their diets? The same is true of mammals' mouths. Wide mouths and sharp pointed teeth suggest that these mammals may be carnivores. Wolves, whales, and bats are all car carnivores. Herbivores are more likely to have long jaws, long tongues, and flat teeth. Deer, sheep, monkeys, and pandas are all herbivores. Omnivorous mammals include bears, opossums, chipmunks, and mice. Many humans are omnivores, but humans think about the choices they make about what to eat. Omnivores generally have sharper front teeth and flat teeth for chewing in the back of their mouths. Think about your mouth. Do you think humans were designed to eat meat, only plants, or both meat and plants? Why? Next time, we'll look at the last of my slides. Be ready for a review of the five vertebrate groups of the animal kingdom. Amphibians, mammals, fish, 
and reptiles. I want, I'm sure you're becoming quite skilled at classifying animals and we'll get to have some fun with doing just that. Can't wait to see you soon. Now, you may be asked some questions to answer online or by your teacher, so pay attention and do your best.